Welcome to another He Said, She Said, and I'm here with Denise, and this will be our one, two, and three. 16, three. So we got one, two, three. Three. And one. Kind of like Rochambeau. Uh, one, two, three, yeah, go. Two, three. <laughs> <laughs> this is our 16th episode, and I'm glad we're doing this because we always got to talk about some fun things here, things that are going to help you to navigate the life you're living and help you navigate everything that's going on. And first time tuning in, my name is Ronald Johnson. And what I do is I help high performers that are facing burnout. So if you're in a situation where you're a high performer, CEO, uh, executive, entrepreneur, and you're like, man, you know what, I'm facing burnout. I, I want to live a much better life. I want to create things that make you feel happy and more fulfillment within. That's where I can help you. And Denise, always just take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. I'm going to catch that ball. I'm Denise Lewis. I have uh, GrandSlamCoaching.com is my business, and I am a performance coach specialist. So whether your performance is on or off the athletic field, in the boardroom, classroom, or the courtroom, I can help you be the best you that you can be so that every day you show up and make every day a Grand Slam day. And today, awesome. yes, our 16th episode, and today we're going to talk about Mother's Day. And yes, this was my idea because <laughs> I'm a mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love the idea because this, I guess it's the first time in a year we're able to celebrate Mother's Day. I mean, this time last year, everything's closed down. I mean, you ever yeah. since we rose to your mom, probably with some chocolates being online, but it's, it's so much different than being a whole touch your mom, give her hugs and tell you love her, maybe go out for dinner or, uh, you know, drink some wine, what you decide to do. So what Mother's Day gift am I getting my mom? Well, first thing I'll tell you this, my mom, because religious, religious reasons, it doesn't celebrate Mother's Day. So I won't be getting her a gift so I can save some money in my pocket. Like, I don't know if that's a good thing, <laughs> but we'll probably call and at least say, thank you, mom. Hope you're on a great day and all that good stuff. So what, what would you get? Tell me about your Mother's Day. What are you getting your mom? Well, my mother, um, for a long time now, ever since my dad died, which is almost 25 years ago, she's, she keeps saying to us, I don't want, a Mother's Day present. I don't want a birthday present. I don't want Christmas presents. I have everything I need except your dad. So funny that you mentioned last year's Mother's Day. Um, I, this was at a time when I was having to do her grocery shopping and I would drive up to her apartment building and literally hand it to the doorman and wave at her from a distance. And she'd throw the check to reimburse me that was weighted with a special, <laughs> with a special paper clip. And then I'd have to get in my car and drive away again. So we did kind of a, a drive by Mother's Day last year. It was like, I think it was probably like a week before I had to do a grocery shopping. So I just threw in some flowers as well and, you know, did the little air hug, you know, thingy. Um, she just wants to spend time with us. Uh, Kincaid is not her oldest grandchild, but her oldest grandson. So she refers to him as her boyfriend. So um, I know she... I'm going to try and get her out next weekend now that we're all vaccinated, including my son, yay. Um, but I have to say, the Giants are in town. And I've asked for Mother's Day and then the Monday and the Tuesday off so I can go work three games at the Giants. <laughs> because I want to be at the ball game for Mother's Day. <laughs> good, good. Awesome, then. So all three of you guys are vaccinated. You guys ready to go to the game? So I'm thinking to myself here. So I think of Mother's Day, I think of dinner and flowers. And you right. think about the ball games, totally different mindset there, but I, but I love it. So what's something you can get? To, I'm trying to think to myself, what is something that we can get our mom? Last night, a lot of my, I think roses are okay, but they eventually after you know, a day or two, they're gone anyways. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, what can we do with our moms? I'm thinking about, can we write, can we make a, an actual car for our mother at, at all this time of year, I'm thinking? I mean, I used to like being able to go to Hallmark cards. You have like a yeah. thousand cards. You can select the best ones, some really funny ones, but now right. those days are gone. I'm thinking, about how can I make my mom, or if I did celebrate Mother's Day, if my mom doesn't, can we make her a nice car? What do you think about that, Denise? Well, actually, it's funny that you mentioned that because, you know, right now it's Safeway Monopoly, and one of the, one of the prizes that I won was from Shutterfly, a set of four coasters. And my mom is huge on coasters. Ooh. So I redeemed that and put a picture of, you know, her and Kincaid and her and Coco and the three of us. And then one of just Kincaid and I, and I put them on these coasters and they're arriving today. And that will be her gift so that she can look at us and see us every time she uses her coaster. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, another, I, I also have won so many Shutterfly things, this Monopoly game. Um, you know, with Shutterfly, you can do those books. 
Oh, yep. Where you can assemble all the things. You can make some picture frames. You can also, and my mom loves to do puzzles. Um, you can take a family photo or a photo of you know whatever she likes, put it on the puzzle, and then she has to build the puzzle to then go get the picture. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Interesting. It's really kind of cool. She kind of has to work for it. And then, you know, then, you know, you're in the doghouse when she pulls it up and puts it back in the box, <laughs> you know? Um, so those are some clever, interesting things. And, you know, I know your mom doesn't celebrate Mother's Day because um, of her religion, but that doesn't mean, see, you're in a great position though, because you can make every day Mother's Day every time you see it. I do. I do. You know what? I, I, I realized this, um, my mom will be 71 in August of this year. So as you people get older, you have to realize you know, the reality is they don't, they may not have much time left. You know, they don't have maybe 40, 50 years left. So I make it a point as often as I can to check in with my mom in this simple text or a phone call. My mom old school, so the phone is where it is. And that's okay yeah. to check in with her because she doesn't have a lot of time left and she's a little bit older too. Well, she's 71, she does good health. So she has nothing really major going on, but you just never know. So for me, yeah. I think instead of always giving, a, a, waiting to most to have a gift, I think the gift, the gift is checking with your mom every other day. Send her a mm -hmm. text, ask how she's doing. Like uh, the other day, I have an old, um, what is this? Uh, and I went from Android, not iPhone. So I have an old Android Note 10, and my mom's complaining about her phone because my mom's old school. So she has a phone like a speakerphone, okay? She just likes to talk to me on speakerphone. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what? My mom's older, so she doesn't buy the newest version of an Android. But me, I'll buy, okay, what's new Android? I'm going to buy that one. And as time goes along, I mean, the speaker may not be as good or people down. So I don't know. Anyways. So I say, hey, mom, you know, I know you've been having some problems with your phone and um, our phone works. Is the speaker's not adequate like it used to be an older phone. Mm -hmm. But no one uses speaker phone really nowadays anyway. So I'm going to give my, I'm going to wipe my Android phone clean. You know, get all new and I'm going to spread my new Android phone. So she has a Note 10 versus, I think she has a, a year or two Motorola kind of Android mm -hmm. phone. So she has one of those, she has a new phone, a new camera, better speaker phone, uh, faster processor, 256 gigabytes of memory so you have a lot of storage there so that's like mm -hmm. my way of giving back it's not just about giving her an old phone but giving her things that make her feel adequate make her feel important um you know because as people get older they're afraid of technology you know mom's oh like, I'm, 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 uh, yeah, yeah so you know it is they're afraid and i want to say mom look you know what even though this is it's your technology is older you still can get something that's new and just take your time to get used to it as long as the basics work like text email mm -hmm. Uh, phone calls, you're fine. The rest take your time, but she should have something that's new. That, that's my way of giving back all the time. Because I don't think yeah. you have to wait to a specific day and time to get back to your mom or loved ones. You can do it daily, uh, weekly, whenever you want to. And that's my way of giving back. So that do the religious things doesn't mean I don't have to give anything back to my mom. It means that I can do it daily now. So I'm free to do it daily and save money if I want to. Absolutely. And, you know, and I do it whenever mom and I connect because we're both, you know, busy with things but um one thing that i did make my mom get my mom's 84 and she's a pistol Ooh. and she's still sharp she's not moving physically around as much as she used to and her hands are starting to shake which is why i play yeah. scrabble with her although the last couple times she's come over she's completely ditched the game because oh. well she plays a lot of bridge and numbers okay. work one part of your brain letters work another part of your brain and then there's the whole tie-in with the being able to physically place the tile on the board and her hands are really shaky. So when she was holding her glass of wine, you know, um, with two hands and she tried to fob it off as that she was really cold. So, oh, okay. Yeah, a little sneaky, sneaky there. <laughs> but one, uh, about five or six years ago, I got her one of those um, devices um, that she wears around her neck and the lanyard has a, uh, whatever gadget in it that senses if you fall and when she falls it's not it's the i've fallen and i can't get up thing but i don't want to have a little button right here in the front that one yes but the one with the little button actually turns into the phone oh so awesome. so you have to really do some research here because you want the one that becomes the phone because it's no point if the phone's over there and you've fallen over here and you can't get up it doesn't matter how much you push the phone because they're going to be calling on your phone which you can't even get to so there was a device and when I was setting it up for her, 
they said, oh, we have this thing in the lanyard that it will sense a fall. And I'm like, so when I take her skydiving next week, she should probably not wear that thing, right? right. And they're like, they're like, no, don't wear that. And mom's like, I'm not going skydiving that exactly. you know, in the background. I mean, it was hilarious. I was having great fun. But the funny thing was she actually did fall um, a couple of years ago, three, oh, maybe four, um, broke her ankle. Oh. And this was on a Saturday night. And I was still working at the catering company because I was working Sunday morning. She called me about eight o'clock Sunday morning. She said, oh, see, there goes my light. I didn't charge enough. She mm. said, Denise, when you um, are done with work, could you please come and get me? I've fallen, I broke my ankle. I need to go to the hospital. So of course, here I am at 8 a.m. We work till noon. I looked at the boys and I said, boys, mom's fault. They were like, you're done, go. So I, so I got there. And she's sitting there and I said, where's your device? And she said, well, it's right here around my neck. I said, did you push the button? She said, oh no, I've been here all night. My hair is not brushed. I don't have my lipstick on. I turned to the counter, held them up and said, push the damn button. Right. And, and I got to say, man, they were there, lickety split. They were there probably within four minutes. Wow. Yeah, it was really awesome. Sorry, I'm going to switch a little bit so I have a little bit more light. So, so is that device waterproof too? Because I know a lot of times people yes. get older, getting in and out of a tub shower deal can be very helter. It's helter, I call it, where you can step out and slip. So it's waterproof so you can wear which is in the shower too. And it yes, works. You, you have to purchase the specific waterproof one, but they also have ones that you can have um, either in the shower or outside the shower. They stick with little suction cups. So I would buy these or whatever. One. Yeah. And it comes with one, but I would buy two or three because you never know where you're going to fall. Um, yep. Type of thing. So that would be, that would be a handy gift. And as much as they might fight it and say, because I'm really old, it's like, well, this is going to help you. And the really cool thing about her device is that if she is, say she's in a car, say you and your mom are driving somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And your mom starts breathing heavily, having palpitations, whatever. You can pull over at the side of the road. You can push her button and she can say, help. I'm feeling here at this. These are my symptoms and they will know from GPS exactly where she is and get that ambulance on the road to wherever you are. So you don't have to pay attention to shit. Was I on the, was I on the 105 or the five or of course in, in California, it's the 80, the 680, the 580, the 880. Mm -hmm you know, 101, <laughs> 101, you know, you, you don't have to worry about where you are. They find you, which is really, really cool. So that's kind of like that's the awesome. gift that keeps on giving, you know, cause then you know that you know what, what I'm thinking about this is that, so my mom, and your mom are older and we got to figure out ways to not just about gifts, but give things that are going to make them feel safe and secure. Because first thing when someone's older, they want the independence. So putting your mom and my mom in a home is kind of the question. And I, I totally understand that, right? Yeah. So what gift can we give that keeps on giving? Like a device or iPhone. So for example, iPhone on your watch has the same thing. So when you fall in and you call 911, you can pick your phone, press the button and call 911 for you. And those are the gifts to me that are more important than just some flowers some chocolate or a car. Because in your case, your mom is right down the street, let's say. In my case, my mom's all the way in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So I, if I had to get down there, it'll take me a day and a half, a day, a half a day. Amos will be there much more fast than I will, for sure. Absolutely. And as she's getting older, you know, she's be worried these kind of things because she lives on the second floor and she still likes her independence, but we got things that make them feel safe. Now, if you're a little bit younger, you know, and your parents are 43 years old, then you can take them out for dinners. You can do all this great stuff for them. But the order give the gift that keeps on giving because if they fall and break the ankle they can't get up i've heard this horror stories of people sitting in the bathtub for days or or for hours before they're even found um or they have a heart attack they can't get to the phone you know cell phone oh one thing someone told me she's an older lady she should be 65. my mom has one is always have a landline and the reason why you have a landline is that the connection with 911 is much more faster than the connection to your cell phone. Because the cell phone has to ping off a tower, right? To get to signal. Yep. Landline, right away. So if you're older, you get a gift and a landline. It's like 20 bucks a month or less and makes you happy because you need to have the landline for your parents. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, my mom, uh, <laughs> we were at the bus stop in the city once, her and my son and I. And she told me, she said, you know, when it's time for me to go in the home, you know, if I fight you, you just tell me to shut up. And I said, mom, I've been telling you to shut up for years. 
about going into a home and it was my son who was like 12. Mom, don't be mean to grandma, blah, 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 blah. She's going to come live with us. Ha, ha. You know, all sorts of stuff, stuff like that. But yeah, it's funny. Now, hold on. You're you're also in between. Give a gift to your mom and you're a mom. So what is your son going to get you? Or you think is going to get you? Oh, I'd love a great report card, but I guess that's a little too much <laughs> right now. Um, you know, I, you know, it would be nice if you got me a plant. I don't want flowers. Um, we do usually uh, once a year get, get my mom an orchid because they last a little bit longer. He did get me an orchid last year for my birthday and it, it took me like seven months to kill it. So I was pretty excited about that because I'm such a brown thumb. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love for him to clean his room, but that's like a normal part of life. I'd love her to cook me dinner, but he does that, you know, occasionally anyway. You know, I just a plant. I'd like a really nice plant that won't die in, you know, three days like some flowers. Have you kind of told him, left, left little breadcrumbs of what you might want for Mother's Day? At least for those first, first 24 hours? You know, I haven't planted any seeds yet because I've just been so, this week has been... This week, this week has been busy, so I will start, and it's not this coming Sunday, but next Sunday. I do know he's going to stay with me next weekend and not go to his dad, so that's a step in the right direction. I think we're going to have his buddy Crawford over, which is great because Crawford and my and my son Kincaid, aside from the fact that they look like brothers, they'll eat just about anything. So you know, it's great to cook for them, and you know, Crawford, Crawford and Kincaid clean up. So that makes me happy. Oh, nice. You know what I like about this? You said the things that not only are going to make him successful, but make you happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it like getting good grades. It's not just about getting good grades. It's about having good grades and getting a decent college. It, it creates these good habits. So when you get a job or you start a business, it has good foundational habits. Mm -hmm. Cleaning your bedroom. It's not just about cleaning your bedroom. It's about Okay, are you able to make sure you're organized? Because if you're organized, you can find something. Are you able to keep night nice and tidy a workstation? Because I've had coworkers just trash, paper wrappings, or someone's car, whatever it may be. And these yeah. are life-changing things. You ask for a small amount. And it, it, it's pretty, I think I like how the fact yours had nothing to do with oh, I hope you guys need a brand new purse, or I hope you're taking off a dinner. I mean, no, you want the things that cost minimal orchards cost minimal money. You get grades, cost minimal money, but you see the long-term effects. You want things to last. And that's a really good personality that you're instilling in your son and that you're showing to our people that listen to our podcast about that because it's very crucial for, the, it's all about the, the small things that become long-lasting. You know, getting good grades, cleaning your kitchen, doing your chores. It's not about the chores, it's about creating some habits because if you have a full-time job, you can work on time. You have to do your job. You have to maintain relationships with your coworkers and your boss. You have to make sure you hit deadlines. You have to make sure you clean the clean workstation. You have to make sure you do everything with a most standard. You can't do things half-assed. You have to do it 100 percent I you know what my dad told me this as a kid. I learned better lessons, but as an adult, I understand <laughs> what it means to <laughs> oh, have these in okay. place. Here it comes. But, but it, it, it was, you know, I'm thinking about right now in my mind. My dad would always tell me. One thing, tell me, son, I'm gonna teach you how to be an adult, not a child, because you're an adult longer than a child. And I, I think it, it has both sides to the story. And the first side is he taught me a lot of fundamentals, how to be successful, work ethic, determination, perseverance, all, all the good stuff. But I think there's a lot to do with things that are missing. And then what was missing is a uh, care factor. Care meaning that how to show the love, how to communicate. I communicate in work environment, but how to communicate when it comes to feelings. Mm -hmm. I think those are lackluster, um, but he just didn't, wasn't good at those. They're so going to teach me things he's good at, which were great. Um, and I also, um, I, didn't get, I didn't have an opportunity to play as a kid. So my summer vacations are time off for spring break or winter vacation. I was still working as a company, which were great because I could earn money. So I got the value of a dollar. Yeah. But I didn't get a chance to play. I mean, one time I said, yeah, I don't want to work this summer. What do you mean you want to work this summer? I don't want to, I want to play. I want to go outside. No, you're not. You're going to come down and work with me. I need your help. 
that was the end of that conversation. Yeah, that but, was the end of it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's a lot of things to do with what we learn as a kid are, are I guess, good, bad, right, or wrong, or indifferent. But it has some good at ways and some bad ways. But I like the fact that a lot of things are taught as kids and we try to pass on to our kids, being a dad or being a mom, are just the fundamentals that are free and long lasting. And they don't may not understand it now, but they will 10 to 15 years from now. Like I'm understanding now at 37 that I did at 15 or 10, or whatever age my dad told me that stuff. Well, I, I will be the first to admit though, I, I like, okay, I like a tidy apartment. I like a tidy house. And I've got to say over the last month, just since I started school, it, this place has gone to hell in a handbasket. Okay, I, I have dust bunnies, I admit it. And 10 days ago, on a Friday night, this was the freakiest thing, within 10 minutes of each other, two shelves in two different cupboards, the pins popped out and fell down, right? Oh. So all the stuff came down, all my vinegar, all my olive oils, all my, you know, not, thank God nothing broke. And then the other shelf had a bunch of soft drinks on it. So I, and it was late Friday night and I pulled them all up and I put them on the counter and I'm like, dude, I'm exhausted. Please, you've got to find these pins. You got to put them back in for me. I haven't done it because I asked him. He hasn't done it. He texted me the next morning saying, I can't find the pins. Oh. And I've left it. So now I've got this little narrow part of it. And even last night, Kincaid was like, mom, the counter's really crowded and we don't have enough room to eat. And I was like, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I was like, I got to go study. And I turned around and walked away. I did. I was, I have not been a good example the last month about keeping this place tidy, but I'm tired and I'm hoping. And when I ask him to do things, normally he does it pretty much straight away. But sometimes when he leaves it a day or two, I'm taking a step back and not doing it for him and just saying, I'm just going to wait. As far as I'm concerned, I asked him 10 days ago, 11 days ago, almost 12. And it's not done and it's driving me nuts. So maybe my reward after I take my next exam this morning, because I today, because I have three more to do today, uh, maybe that will be my treat is finding the pins and putting them up so he can stack the shelves. Ooh, okay. That would be a treat for you and him. You find the pen so you can stack the shelf up. So you guys doing something together at one time. And yeah. that's part about being yeah. a mother. Uh, Mother's Day is doing things together. Yes, exactly. Doing things together. I would love to go watch the baseball game together. But I, while he is vaccinated, he, if I can convince my mom to go, then they, those two can go together. Is your mom vaccinated or she doesn't want to go to the ball game? No, she's, no, she's vaccinated and she loves baseball. And she can't wait okay. to have her hot dog. It's still kind of weird though, because while you can go in, it's it's still limited seating, but then starting in May, they're gonna have more seating, but then there's gonna be vaccinated only sections versus non-vaccinated sections. And you can't wander around the ballpark like you used to. You really have to like pretty much go and sit and watch the game. And that's hard for my son. He likes to wander. Right, explore, whatever. Yeah, explore, whatever. He He knew all the names of all the attendants up on the promenade level, who was running the Coke slide, who was by the big mitt, who was at the uh, um, at the cable car. And he knew all the vendors' names at all the different hot dog stands. And so we, they'd be like, hey, Kincaid. He's like, hey, George, hey, hey. Right. you know, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious. So I think that part he'll, he'll miss out on. So I, I don't know, that's not today's thing. So that's interesting. Know. You learn yeah. something new, a non-vaccinated side and a vaccinated side. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. I and guess that's order, how it, you have to, And you have to order everything on your MLB app. Yeah. So they download the app and order all your food there and they deliver it to your, your uh, and chair? And then you go up and you pick it up and it's all on your thing. So th my mother is so not tech. Her ver This is her saying, oh, look, my phone is on. And then she'll push the button on top and turn it off. <gasps> like, I have my phone with me. I'm like, okay. And she's like, well, how do I? I'm like, mom, look at this. Now set it down, let it ride. Don't. She's like, but I have to touch the button. I'm like, you don't touch the button. Just let it ride. She can't do it. She just can't do it. It's hilarious. And texting, forget. I'm like, mom, look, you do this. And she's like, why, why would I want to do that? If I want yeah, to talk to you, I call you up and talk to you. That's a and different voicemail. Thing. Yeah, that's the difference between <laughs> 71 and 84. So <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would say this though, my dad was still alive. He was old school, never text. You would call, yeah. leave a two minute voicemail. <laughs> the, my mom, at least, I would say at least 
has kept with the trends of texting or checking in text or something like that. He, on the other hand, old school way, has old school flip phone, call you, don't answer, leave a voicemail and all that stuff like that. But I guess each his own, everybody's different. And, but you know what, what I still like about the old school way is still that hearing that voice. She says, my mom always tell me, son, I know I can text you. I know how you will respond, but just hearing your voice, let's know everything's okay. And that's the key. Is yeah. that connection outside of gifts, outside of doing, and just that that hug, that touch in the back. Um, I was studying um, in positive psychology the other day. I was studying about fingertips, right? Let's say your pointed finger or your lips. Those are very sensitive parts in your body, right? Now, if you want to touch me some something more, your fingertips or your lips, and those are very acute and very sensitive organs for the human body. And that that hug or that touch makes it more powerful for human beings. So give mama a hug, you know, giving her a high five, you know, looking at her face. And those are all huge things we can do without having to spend one dollar and will last a lot more. Mm -hmm. And I want to say again, go out there, those that listen to this podcast, love your mom, love people around you, and give them the things that last them for a very long time. Don't be into showy things of the expensive dinners or the purse, unless they're into that stuff, but give them things that keep on giving. Because a hug will last a long time. Hearing someone's voice lasts a long time. Mm -hmm. Give us a high five will last a long time. And I want to say again, this is Ronald Johnson, and um, I help people that, that are high performers facing burnout. So if you're going to find me, you can go to www.ronjohnsonlifecoaching.com. And I'm Denise Lewis. I'm at www.grandslamcoaching.com. I want to wish all you moms out there happy Mother's Day. Don't worry, dads, we'll get to you in June. We have some time. <laughs> and I'm here to help everyone increase their performance. So if increasing your performance is going to Shutterfly and getting your mom some coasters or making her up a little picture book or a little calendar of the kids so she can look at them for 12 months of the year, good for you. But yes, cook a dinner, make a lunch, have a picnic, give a hug, give a high five. And, uh, you know, be good to your mom every day of the year, not just on Sunday, May 9th. So have a great no. day, everybody. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.